I think the most important part of getting people to show up is selecting a course that people are interested in. Um, and there are many ways you can do that. We have used uh, several ways, including um, you know, attendance in our classes. Historically, what classes are people signing up for and requesting and things like that? And so we decided to, you know, for example, Microsoft Excel is a hugely popular topic. People are always requesting, you know, some classes on that. And um, uh, yeah, and so we've been successful in those learning circles when we choose uh, those courses. So for me, in my library, what we started, um, it's now being called the Q method, is we started by putting a poster board in our hallway. And on the poster board, we separated a couple of different classes by subject. So there was general, there was like um, business, and there was tech. And we put a sign that said, what would you like to learn at the library? And we left sticker dots out. And people that were in the hallways of the library saw the board and they stopped and they put stickers next to the things that they wanted to take. And so after a month, we probably had like 90 stickers on our board, and that really helped us see what the public was interested in. And people really enjoyed being involved in it. And some people say, well, I put like four stickers down for different things. And I was like, that's cool. We totally want to know whatever you're interested in. And I think for that, people really felt invested in choosing the classes that we made. We had great turnout, and we had great retention, too. So um, I don't think all the people that put the sticker dots came back for the classes, but the topics were ones that resonated with people in the community, and they were things that we didn't think about. So then they promoted those things to their friends, too. So people that really wanted that class invited other people. So we had really good turnout, and we had really great retention for those classes. The first thing is you have to genuinely know your community. Um, and that means that you have to recognize the organizations that are doing the same or similar type of work because they're both our partners and our competition in these types of activities. So developing those relationships can be a boon for um, creating the engagements within your library's programming as well as um, knowing who is not being served in your community. Um, if you have seniors who may be homebound, recognizing that we may have to bring some of that programming out of the library and maybe conducting the learning circle at the community center for the senior center. Um, discovering, um, I discovered uh, recently there was an organization for cerebral palsy in my community and we've started a weekly engagement with them. How can I maybe design the PT, P2PU um, coursework for their higher level learners so that they actually have this experience of something educational that they might be interested in, but they may not necessarily have had access to traditionally. So um, recognizing what part of your community is being served by your library, what part of the community may not be being served by the library, how we can increase those accesses and knowing knowing who the other actors are in your community is invaluable when you're conducting these outreaches. We're a school and so we have a wait list. So we're pulling students from a wait list on boarding uh, to regular classes. Uh, but we, we bring students in according or uh, on a cohort uh, depending on their interests. Uh, right from intake, we're asking what are their goals, what, do, what are their interests, what do they feel that they're good at, um, do they like math, do they like computers. We're having this, these conversations so that we know where the student might fit in and what we can offer. Uh, once that potential student becomes a participant, then we're uh, doing more of what are your immediate goals? Uh, what, do, what skills are you interested? And that's how we modify the learning circle, the upcoming learning circle. Uh, every learning circle is different depending on the focus. So is it, is it uh, more workforce related? Uh, is it solely English? Um, do they have a goal of English towards citizenship? 
um, depending on the group and depending on, on the interest, we will know if it's going to be more of a hobby or if it's going to be more academics.